All right, so let's get to our double unboxing here. First thing I'm gonna do is take a look at the 13 inch MacBook Air, which I think is their most popular model. You just need to slice the plastic along the back here. Let's peel off the plastic, flip it over, and then we're gonna lift the lid. And there we are, fresh 13 inch MacBook Air. All right, nice little tab here to lift up our 13 inch MacBook Air, which feels quite big actually. A nice rigid aluminum unibody design. You have some plastic here to peel off. I love that sound, slide it out. Now before we take a close look at the MacBook Air, let's take a look at the contents here. So of course we have designed by Apple in California, so we have some paperwork. Inside we have a quick start guide, so a nice colorful quick start guide that highlights its major features, ports, uh, and that sort of thing. And of course I'll talk about those when I look at the computer. We have our regulatory information and of course a set of Apple stickers. Now as always we have our power supply here. This is a 45 watt power supply with our cable bundled up here. So we have our extension cable and then we have the MagSafe 2 cable. Let's go ahead and pull that off. So MagSafe 2 we're all familiar with. This came out a few years ago. It's a thinner port than uh, the previous generation. So again, nice little cover here to protect the connector. So the great thing about MagSafe 2 is that it's magnetic and it can pop off pretty easily so you don't yank the computer off your desk. Next up, we have our 45 watt power supply with our folding prongs here. This also pops off so you can add the extension cable or the international adapters if you're traveling. And then you have your cable management here so you can wind up your cable for traveling. Now there is one more piece of packaging underneath here. So if we lift up our lid, we'll find a piece of paper protecting the keyboard from the glass. Now before I take a close look at this computer, let's get to the 11.6 inch model so we can compare them. Next up, the 11.6 inch model, certainly much smaller than the 13 inch here, so let's go and peel off the plastic. Let's go ahead and lift the lid. And there we go, just a shrunken down version of what we just did here. Let's go ahead and lift the uh, computer out of its tray. A very nice compact computer. I'm gonna go ahead and peel off the envelope here, slide it right out. There we go, 11.6 inch, very nice and portable. Now in terms of our accessories, again, they're identical 45 watt power adapter, our literature and the extension cord. So we're gonna skip that and get right to the comparison. Now obviously the 13 inch MacBook Air is considerably bigger than the 11 inch MacBook Air. And if you look at the displays, you can see there's also a slight difference in terms of their aspect ratio. The 11 inch is more widescreen than the 13 inch. There is also a different resolution here. The uh, MacBook Air 13 inch has a resolution of 1440 by 900. That's greater than the 1366 by 768 of the 11 inch MacBook Air. So you do have more resolution to work with on the 13 inch, which can be useful, especially if you want to scroll through web pages and see more of the web page at one time. Now these displays are unchanged from the previous models and they don't have the greatest off access viewing because they are not IPS displays. In terms of pixel density, they're far from retina. So the 13 inch has a PPI of 128. The 11 inch has a PPI of 135. So the 11 inch, although it has less resolution and a smaller display, display does have a more pixel dense display, which does help a bit. Now, although we have a glossy display, we do have an anti-reflective coating, which isn't quite as effective as the one on the Retina MacBook Pros, but it does a pretty good job. Now, the thing I've always noticed about the 11 inch and 13 inch models is that the 11 inch is always brighter than the 13 inch, even if the screen brightness is set to maximum. So that's something to consider. If you want the brightest display, the 11 inch is the one you want. Now in terms of the keyboard, this is also where they differ quite a bit. The 11 inch MacBook Air has all the same keys, it's just that the top and bottom rows have been shrunken down to give more room to the trackpad. The trackpads are also different sizes. You can see they're the same width, but the 13 inch is a bit taller, a bit larger. Now once again, both keyboards are backlit and there is an ambient light sensor which will adapt the brightness depending on the ambient conditions. Now in terms of those keys along the top, of course, we have our screen brightness, we have mission control, the launcher, along with our keyboard brightness. We also have our media controls, volume controls, as well as mute and power. Now at the top of the display, we'll find a FaceTime HD camera good for 720p video, which is flanked by a nearly invisible LED indicator. We also have an ambient light sensor right next to it, which adapts the screen brightness as well as the keyboard brightness. Now on the left side of the computers, we have a MagSafe 2 connector along with a USB 3.0 connector and a combination headphone and input jack along with dual microphones along the side. And as you can see, we have a nice tapered design which provides a nice kind of angled approach to the keyboard which feels really comfortable. Now along the right side, this is where we'll find some differences here. So we have a Thunderbolt 2 port along with a USB 3.0 port. So we do have two connector and a combination headphone and input jack along with dual microphones along the side. And as you can see, we have a nice tapered design which provides a nice kind of angled approach to the keyboard which feels really comfortable. 
Now along the right side, this is where we'll find some differences here. So we have a Thunderbolt 2 port along with a USB 3.0 port. So we do have two USB 3.0 ports on both sides of the computer, but the 13 inch gives us an SDXC card slot, which is very useful. Now toward the front of the computer, we have a little notch here that allows us to lift up the lid of the display and the hinge is perfectly balanced. So it allows you to lift up the lid without lifting up the entire computer. Now, speaking of the hinge, it does hide the ventilation for the chassis of the MacBook Air, and it fully works no matter what position the display is in, whether it's closed or open. Now, if you look closely around the edge of the display of the MacBook Air, you'll see this rubber gasket that surrounds it. This provides some protection for the glass and keyboard so they don't mash together. Now, on the bottom of both computers, you'll find a single piece of metal which is secured by pentalobular screws along with these plastic feet along the bottom. Again, this is a carried over design. Now, this is not meant to be user upgradable, so you can't swap out the RAM if you want to add additional RAM. So if you want more than four gigs, as I would recommend, you'll have to upgrade that through Apple. Now, both the 11 inch and 13 inch have a set of stereo speakers hidden behind the keyboards. But the 11 inch, of course, is a smaller chassis and it doesn't sound as loud as the 13 inch. It also doesn't sound as full or rich as the 13 inch. So let's go ahead and take a listen to check out the difference. Lannister, Baratheon, Stark, Tyrell, they all just spokes on a wheel. Lannister, Baratheon, Stark, Tyrell, they're all just spokes on a wheel. Now, in terms of dimensions, they're actually the same thinness from 0.11 inches to 0.68 inches at their thinnest to thickest point. Their width is 11.8 versus 12.8. Depth is 7.56 to 8.94. Now, in terms of weight, this is where there's a bigger difference. 2.38 pounds for the 11 inch to 2.96 pounds for the 13 inch. So there's almost a half pound difference. Now, with the larger 13 inch model, of course, we have a larger battery, 54 watt hours versus 38 watt hours for the 11 inch. Now, both of them are lithium polymer batteries. So that means you get up to nine hours on the 11 inch model versus 12 hours on the 13 inch model. So there's a pretty big difference there. So if you want better battery life, definitely check out the 13 inch. Next up, let's take a look at our Geekbench scores to see how both MacBook Air stack up in terms of their overall system performance. Now, both of them are basically the same here, so they have the same scores. The single core score is around 2,900. The multi-core score is around 5,800. Now, if I take a look at the late 2013 MacBook Air, which had a Haswell processor, uh, that scored around 2,647 on the single core and 5,150 on the multi-core score, so that's a pretty significant gain. Next up, let's take a look at our SSD speeds, and unfortunately, this is where things get a little confusing. Uh, so so for the 13 inch model, I was able to get a write speed of 650 and a read speed of 1400. That's pretty impressive. But the 11 inch model only saw a write speed of 430 and a read speed of 680. That's very similar to the previous SSD. Now, once again, the 11 inch and 13 inch are using different SSD models. And if you look at the system report, you'll actually see that the designator on the 11 inch model refers to an SD or SanDisk, while the 13 inch SSD refers to SM, which is Samsung. The Samsung is the faster one. That's the one you want, but there's no way to determine that before you buy it. Now, if we look at the SSD speed of the previous generation MacBook Air, you can see that again, we're seeing a doubling of performance with the new generation. But of course, that is only with the 13 inch model. Next up is Cinebench, which will give us an idea of the graphics performance of the new MacBook Airs. So in terms of our OpenGL score, both computers perform around 25 frames per second, and the CPU score is around 260 CBs. Now compare this to the previous generation MacBook Air, which was using a Haswell processor with the HD Graphics 5000 processor. That OpenGL score was 18 frames per second, and the CPU score was around 211. So graphics performance has increased considerably over the previous generation. Now, choosing the right MacBook Air really depends on your needs. If it's going to be your main computer, I would recommend the 13-inch model because it gives you more screen real estate, an SD card, and a larger battery. But if you want an ultra-portable kind of secondary computer, then the 11-inch is your guy. So in the end, even though the MacBook Air design remains unchanged, the internals have been brought up to speed with the latest and greatest hardware out there. So this still remains an excellent option, especially at $899 and $999. You still get a well-built computer made out of a single piece of aluminum with that nice thin wedge-shaped design, which is nice and portable and feels great to use.
And of course, the MacBook Air retains all of its I.O., the Thunderbolt 2 port, the two USB 3.0 ports, a micro SD card slot on the 13-inch model, all of which is made a little more complicated on the new MacBook, which I'll review in a later video. Unfortunately, the new MacBook Airs do not get the new Force Touch trackpads, which the MacBook Pro and the new MacBooks get, but these are still excellent multi-touch glass trackpads and one of the best in the industry. So that's going to do for me in this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.